This is the inside of an IVT Premium Line X15 a ground effect heat pump. Uh, this is a device that's responsible for heating my house. It's the middle of winter and uh, in the middle of the night this thing started screaming at me, woke me up and told me oh, yeah, I am just going to turn into a uh, 6 kilowatt electric kettle uh, because something's gone wrong and uh, the compressor is just not turning on anymore. Uh, so it uh, was throwing an alarm on front panel of 80, uh, or was it a uh, low voltage during compressor start and uh, it just wouldn't do anything. Uh, so what we know is we have brain activity because the uh, front panel lights up just fine uh, but it won't create any heat, it won't run any circulation pumps. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with uh, ground effect heat pumps, you have two circulation pumps, you have one there for the one big one for the uh, ground effect uh, heat exchange. So that's uh, pumping liquid out to a huge uh, tube in the ground and there's one circulation pump in the back there for the rain thing. That for uh, providing circulation to the inside of a house. Uh, so thankfully uh, this thing is uh, equipped with an emergency mode so I just got up and flicked the switch and now it's just running everything. Uh, on pure electric, but uh, that's incredibly inefficient. Uh, instead of drawing five kilowatts sometimes, this thing's drawing six and a half kilowatts continuously, uh, which is just incredibly expensive to run. Uh, so I want to fix this thing uh, ASAP. We also lose a bunch of fancy regulation uh, functionality as well while this thing is operating in this mode. Uh, so the IVT uh, premium line X15 uh, is a very fancy heat pump. It dates from about uh, 2010. This one was installed 2012. Uh, today it's uh, January uh, 2019. So this thing's got a couple of years behind it. And uh, this thing is completely inverter controlled. Uh, you have an inverter for the big compressor and uh, you have an inverter for the uh, heat uh, uh, heat transfer material in the ground and there's probably an invert in the uh, circulation pump for the house as well and uh, it's in front now the only thing that's alive is uh, this manual um, god it seems to be a mechanical thermostat board there to control everything while it's running in emergency mode uh, so uh, i was in the good fortune of talking to tech about these once when we had it checked up a few years ago. And he left me with a clue. And he said, these are very reliable models. It was uh, very expensive, it's a high-end model. And the only thing that usually goes wrong is this big power resistor there. And uh, judging from how that resistor is connected uh, to two pins of a relay, I would not be surprised if this is just a soft start resistor to prevent those two giant capacitors from just uh, uh, blowing the mains uh, breaker every time this thing turns on. And uh, in the middle of the night, about five in the morning when I got up and checked this, uh, this resistor seemed uh, to my tired tired mind to be open circuit so we're going to have to verify that before we dig any further and naturally I really hope it's just that resistor and nothing further wrong uh, like an automation failure relay failure uh, that's uh, caused uh, further damage to the inverter board because uh, this has one of those giant uh, brick type STK devices underneath there uh, so this board is basically unrepairable if it's failed and uh, new ones, if available, is going to be hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand euros. And uh, it's full of all this horrible garbage. Uh, I think this is, yeah, it's a Mitsubishi. So at least it's not a, a internal engineered. It's going to be generic for this uh, particular compressor model. What do we have? Mitsubishi AEV60F, something or the other. Pretty big compressor, pretty big device. But yeah, let's just uh, turn this off and uh, have a look at that resistor and uh, 
hope that uh, that's our issue. And we do seem to be on to something because that's my meter connected up to said resistor. Don't worry, all of this is turned off now, the main to break is off, and I've verified that there's no voltage, so I can shove my fingers wherever I want without dying. Uh, but yeah, the meter's connected up. One lead on one end of the resistor there, and one lead, well, the other one was going to the other end there, and it's measuring absolutely nothing. So this resistor here is completely dead, because I strongly doubt they'd use like a 20 watt resistor uh, that's over 50 mega ohms. So this thing has died, and if we look at how the board is laid out, I do think we might be on to something with my initial theory. Because if we look at the traces, we have one end of a resistor going to one end of a relay, and that end is going to this black wire here, which is further tracing down. Let's see if I'm on the right track here, which is tracing down to this big choke, which is then going up to this cable there, and uh, that wire in turn is going straight up to one end of a capacitor. So, uh, I haven't really dug into where the other end of that relay choke is going, but this resistor definitely has a potential to be in series with the big capacitors, uh, meaning since we've suffered a bunch of power outages and perhaps one tonight, there's a decent risk this resistor would fail because it's going to be loaded every time this thing uh, receives power. Every time you cold boot it from a power failure, there's going to be a bunch of current rushing through that resistor to stop those guys charging up too fast. When the relay is click and the heat pump turns on. So with no resistor there, there's going to be no power going to the big uh, power caps. Uh, the power side of the inverter is going to be completely dead. And of course, we're going to get an under voltage alarm uh, for the inverter because there's no, going to be no voltage across these caps. And I'm going to make that hypothesis now. Uh, we're going to hook all of this stuff back up, turn it on, and I bet... If we just shove our probes across these two caps, uh, we are going to have a no or minimal voltage when we put this thing back into normal operation. So let's see if uh, my hypothesis stands true. Okay, so uh, we're hooked up across one of the caps. Uh, they don't seem to be in parallel, so uh, perhaps they're in series, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, we are going to be measuring the voltage across one of them. I've turned emergency mode off, so when we flick the big safety breaker here, uh, we are going to see this pump returning to what's supposed to be normal duty. It's probably going to sit around for a while and then start shouting at me again. But uh, let's just give you guys a view over there while I flick the switch and hope for zero volts. And uh, that's completely and utterly dead. So it takes a while for it to boot up, but uh, I would imagine uh, we should see rectified mains across the big caps quite instantaneously. We do have a big contact there therefore probably breaking power to the VFD, but uh, I would imagine that's uh, turned on. It does go bonk after a while, though. That could be that contactor uh, and activating. And there it went bonk. And uh, we still have no voltage crossing our cap. I think we're going to pursue the power resistor since uh, it's obviously involved with these caps, and these caps are dead. Could be a shorted cap as well, but we'll see. Ah, there we go. That's what I woke up to at 5.40 a.m. this morning. I don't know how to get this thing to speak anything other than Swedish, but uh, it's not running. And uh, I am just verifying that we actually have power going into the big VFD. 
uh, and that seems to be the case. So that's the incoming three phase mains there with the two probes shoved in, and uh, we have a phase that's going in. So, power going into the VFD drive board, but uh, no power in the mains rectifier caps and an open circuit big resistor that's associated with the big caps. I think that's a quite definite diagnosis. So I want to make sure the caps aren't shorted and uh, then I'm just going to have to rip a bunch of shit out of this thing to get at that resistor because it's mounted in a metal bracket that's attached behind the inverter board. Ugh. But uh, if it's just a resistor, I might be able to source a new one today even. So fingers crossed is that, else it's going to be rather expensive heat in this house until I get a new one. Safety first. What's more safe than an L key? Aha. Why use finesse and time? We can just use a bit of brute force and rip the thing out. And I'm quite sure we have a culprit right here. 30 watts, 60 ohms, and that's completely out of focus and certainly not what we're seeing. And the good thing is that might be something I can manufacture at home. I might not even have to go anywhere to get a replacement for this. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. These guys have a bunch of power resistors in them. Oh, would you look at these beauties! We have a 39 ohm and a 30. Put those two together. We get 16.9. So 17 ohms, that's going to be perfectly fine. This is uh, not at all a high precision application. It's just a soft start resistor, I bet. So all I have to do is put these guys together. We have something in a very similar envelope. These are probably 25 watts each. This one's 30. And uh, these guys are probably going to be more durable anyway, since we have a metal case variety with better internal heat transfer capability. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So we're literally going to fix a uh, 2012 ground effect heat pump using parts out of a 1980s analog TV transmitter. <laughs> ah, soon there's going to be no part of this house which doesn't con contain uh, old analog TV transmitter parts. I swear these are the best junk box devices I've ever owned. And there we have our replacement resistor. So it's just a 39 and a 30 ohm soldered in parallel with the original wires hooked up onto one of them. And on the meter we have something that definitely ought to be within spec. Ah, this is amazing. I'm so happy about this. So the plan now is to take these and bolt them to the case somewhere, just drill a couple of holes and uh, screw them in place. So we'll have to get back to uh, when that's actually done to see how it turns out. Okay, and there's our finished repair. So we have the two resistors bolted onto a case with the finest quality wood screws and uh, they're hooked up and ready to go. So now all I have to do is uh, mount the two big caps back together, uh, put the uh, rear cover back on. I had to uh, take that off because I thought there was uh, some uh, nuts and bolts that were going to fall off. Uh, there weren't. We can see the huge heatsink for the uh, main VFD, by the way, quite a bit of power being dissipated in that, with the aid of a big fan of that. But yeah, just going to put this back together, and uh, nothing left to do after that, than uh, get our Allen key out of the safety interlock, and uh, give it a go. I think this is going to work, I'm, I'm really, I'm really hoping it's going to work anyway, or if this is going to be expensive. Oh, there we go, everything's mounted back together. 
Then a short circuit, nothing's looking too bad. But purple PC paint supply, why I use this actually not quite rated for the voltage uh, needed, but it's gonna be fine, it's 300 volts rated. We're gonna see maybe 400 volts there, but it's not touching anything. And we have our original leads going to the original relay. And uh, the rear cover is back on. We should be ready to go. So let's just uh, undo this. Didn't go up in smoke yet. I don't think we have a ground fault interrupt on this circuit. In fact, on any circuit, but that's fine. So main power on. Control circuit on. It that's more clicks than we had before. Hasn't gone up in fire. Logic is alive. Still, we haven't killed it completely. We have very low temperatures on everything here, so uh, we're 11 degrees upstairs. Well, this thing's been off for hours, so now it's just a waiting game to see if it shrieks to life or if it's just gonna uh, start going on fire or throwing alarms at us. This VFD is incredibly loud, so uh, my eardrums are gonna burst if it does turn on. Hey, we do have a red LED on the main board now. That's more than I had before. And I simply got a red LED, so it's probably not a bad thing. Right. It's doing something. It's on. That's the sound of a VFD. We've got revs! We've got revs! <laughs> it's working, it's not getting on fire. The compressor's running. Ha! We have revs! I can't believe it! 40 RPM! <laughs> oh wow, we just... We just totally fixed... A fifth... Oh, this thing's like 10,000... A 10,000 10, euro heat pump with parts literally out of a 40-year-old TV transmitter. I literally ripped resistors out of this thing. Look, that's what I used to be. It's running. That's a compressor revs, 50 RPM. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, wow. Ah, oh, what a relief. What an incredible relief. If, ah, oh, if this thing, God, this lens is so bad for vlogging. If this thing had had a broken inverter board or any more serious issue going, uh, I'd have been shithead. Like I, the part, basically every single board in one of these now we're really getting out of the highway. Basically every single board in one of these is uh, a few hundred quid. Uh, if not a thousand, if you can even get your hands on them. Uh, this particular model was actually quite uh, short-lived before they just retired the entire inverter line, so... Huh. I am so relieved. Worst case scenario would have had to get an entirely new one of these, and that would have been just no fun at all. Ha! Yeah, there you go. Fixing ground effect heat pump with part out of a TV transmitter. Thank you for watching. <laughs>